India has successfully tested a hypersonic missile capable vehicle on the 7th of September. So what is a hypersonic missile and why is it such a potent weapon? How is it going to augment India's defense capabilities vis-a-vis Pakistan and China? Are there any spin-off benefits of this technology? How can we counter a hypersonic missile strike? We will find answers to all these questions on this show today. I am Rajesh Kutti and you have just started watching Bite the Bullet. The DRDO successfully test fired the hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle from the Abdul Kalam island off the coast of Odisha. With this, India became the fourth country in the world after the United States, China and Russia to develop such a technology. This successful test will pave the way for India to develop missiles that can travel at close to six times the speed of sound. So, what is hypersonic speed? The density and temperature of the atmosphere decreases as we go higher and at a height of about 35,000 feet, the speed of sound is approximately 1000 km per hour. Flight in the range of 800 to 1000 km per hour is said to be subsonic. Commercial airliners usually fly within this range. Flight in the range of 1000 to 5000 km per hour is said to be supersonic and the SR-71 Blackbird and the Concorde used to fly in that range. Objects which fly above 5000 km per hour are said to be flying at hypersonic speeds. The US built experimental aircraft X-15 flew at hypersonic speeds. So. How is a hypersonic missile different from a conventional missile? Presently, two types of missiles are in service with major powers of the world. They are cruise missiles and ballistic missiles. A cruise missile is just like an unmanned aircraft which can travel at subsonic, supersonic or hypersonic speeds. Since they stay relatively close to the surface of the earth, they cannot be detected easily by an anti-missile system and are designed to carry large payloads with high precision. Ballistic missiles meanwhile are launched directly into the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere. They travel outside the atmosphere where the warhead detaches from the missile and falls towards a predetermined target. They are self-guided weapon systems which can carry conventional or nuclear payloads. A hypersonic missile combines the speed of a ballistic missile with the maneuvering capabilities of a cruise missile, making these hypersonic missiles very reliable and extremely potent. Their speed reduces the warning time significantly, thereby reducing the effectiveness of missile countermeasures like missile defense shields. Combined with their high maneuverability and an unpredictable arc of travel, they are the real fire and forget missiles. It basically means that if it is launched from the northernmost point in Kashmir, it will hit its target in the southernmost part of India in Tamil Nadu about 3200 kilometers away in less than 28 minutes. How does a hypersonic missile work? Normally, supersonic missiles use a ramjet engine which carry liquid oxygen and hydrogen as fuel to sustain its flight, just like a normal space shuttle. A hypersonic missile, on the other hand, uses a supersonic combustion ramjet, also known as a scramjet engine, to further its flight. Scramjet engines are air-breathing engines and therefore it need not carry liquid oxygen with it. Air is forced in through the scramjet inlet and compressed before it is mixed with hydrogen fuel 
which then ignites and is directed out of the nozzle from the back at hypersonic speeds. It collects oxygen from the atmosphere as it travels, resulting in at least 70% reduction in weight. To produce the same thrust, the scramjet engine requires less than one-seventh of the fuel that a rocket engine needs. This in turn increases the speed and range of the scramjet engine. Another advantage of the scramjet engine vehicle is that they have a greater maneuverability because they rely on aerodynamic forces rather than on rocket thrust which results in higher safety as flights can be aborted with the vehicle gliding back to the earth. So, how is this hypersonic missile going to augment India's defense capabilities vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan and China? Pakistan's missile program built with Chinese assistance include mobile short and medium range weapons that can reach any part of India. The Shaheen ballistic missile inducted in November 2014 reportedly has a range of about 2,500 kilometers. The Chinese on the other hand have more than 16 types of operational missiles ranging from 220 km range cruise missiles to 15,000 km range intercontinental ballistic missiles. The JL and the Dongfeng series of missiles pose a grave threat to the Indian mainland and also to the freedom of navigation in the Straits of Malacca, the South China Sea and now the Indian Ocean. The newest Chinese missile, the Zingkong-2, also known as the Wave Rider, is a hypersonic cruise missile which the Chinese claim can break through any current generation anti-missile defense system. India has nine types of operational missiles like the Agni-3 with a range of 3000 km and the Agni-5 with a declared range of 5800 km. Agni-5 can hit any target in China including Beijing from bases in central and southern India far away from the Chinese mainland. But because these missiles arc along a predictable ballistic path like a bullet, they lack the element of surprise. These new hypersonic missiles maneuver aerodynamically which enable them to dodge the enemy's defenses and keep them guessing about the target. It will also bring a larger part of the world within striking distance of an Indian missile, thereby ensuring that our safety, sovereignty and independence are never threatened. From an Indian point of view, what could be the possible spin-offs of the development of a hypersonic missile? New discoveries in metallurgy and electrical systems are expected to be made in the future for the scramjet engine and these technologies will ultimately filter down for commercial usage which will make all our lives much better. To launch satellites into high earth orbit, conventional rocket engines need liquid oxygen and hydrogen as fuel which is ignited to produce the required thrust. At such altitudes, the HSTDV cannot be used because its scramjet engine will not be able to work due to acute shortage of oxygen in the atmosphere. But with this new technology, we will be able to launch small satellites regularly into low earth orbit at a very low cost. It will give a major boost to 3D printing in India. 3D printing is a computer controlled additive manufacturing technique in which a digital model is turned into a three-dimensional object by adding layers and layers of thin slices of horizontal materials. 3D printed components were first used by SpaceX in 2014 on a Falcon 9 rocket. Overcoming intense heat both inside the engines and on the missile skin is an integral part of hypersonic flight. Hence in-house development of resilient super alloys, ultra high temperature ceramics and novel coolants may be the game changing spin-offs for our indigenous industries. To counter a hypersonic missile strike, we will need to sort through large amounts of technical data within seconds. Since the time available to do this will only be a couple of seconds, the human element in the chain will have to be removed completely and artificial intelligence will need to take its place. So development of this hypersonic missile technology will bring a quantum leap 
in the development of artificial intelligence in India. Now, the obvious question that arises is, how do we counter a hypersonic missile launched at us? Countering a hypersonic missile is a very challenging and difficult job since they remain in the atmosphere during all their flight time at a very low altitude. Space-based sensors may be able to track and target incoming hypersonic missiles more efficiently. Directed energy weapons like a laser weapon with hit-to-kill capabilities are some of the other means to counter a hypersonic missile attack. In the absence of a credible defense system against a hypersonic missile attack, the only way to respond will be to launch a preemptive strike on those missile launchers that carry the hostile hypersonic missiles and destroy them before they are launched. To do this, we need a fast, reliable and a credible offensive strike capability like the United States conventional prompt global strike capability which can reach any target in the world in less than 60 minutes. Does India have such a capability? Not yet. The anti-satellite missile launch on 27th of March 2019 dubbed as Mission Shakti knocked out one of our own satellites 300 kilometers in space in a flight that lasted for just over half a minute. And now with the successful test flight of the hypersonic technology demonstrator, it can be safely inferred that a conventional prompt Indian global strike capability is not very far away. Team White Tolika congratulates DRDO and all concerned agencies for reaching an important milestone in the history of post-independent India. We wish them all the best in all their future endeavors. Jai Hind and Jai Bharat.